you'll find that sometimes you get this very uh, inconsistent response. Sometimes you can duplicate it and sometimes you can't. You'll find that um, everything looks fine in your scene view, but then you play your game and things are randomly disappearing. Because they're all in the same layer, they're, they're occupying the exact same space, and Unity is using its own rules behind the scenes, what to show. Well, why would it be doing something complicated like that? Because these are really complex objects behind the scenes. They look like simple sprites. Behind the scenes, they are wireframes. Uh, everything that your graphics hardware displays, everything, uh, gets through a process called tessellation broken down into triangles. So if you notice, even a tree is broken down into triangles through this process called tessellation. And that is how every single piece of graphics hardware that's in this room and everybody that's listening right now, every single piece of graphics hardware that they use um, also uses a process of tessellation to break it down into triangles. So there's a lot of complex rules that can go on behind the scenes on who overlaps where and when. So it's very important that when you are in uh, 2D to specify exactly what layers you want and exactly what uh, order and layer that you want as well. And uh, is it possible in, if they are in a conflicting layer like that, you can separate them using uh, like Z values, essentially? Yeah, so if, if they are in a conflicting layer, so if they have the same layer and the same order and layer, then the third value is Z okay. to be able to change as well. So three values. Cool. All right, let's look at some camera effects next. With camera effects, you can do some pretty professional looking things to your scenes. Um, a lot of third-party ones available. If you go in the Unity Asset Store, you can get um, all different camera emulation modes. Really, like blooms and really neat stuff. Fog effects, all well, kinds of stuff. So Unity gives us a whole bunch of effects, which we'll look at by default. But also, um, for like the really hardcore photographers and people that really like to frame their images just right, there's some um, essentially filters that will model existing film equipment out there to give you a particular view towards a particular type of camera. I'd like, some people get pretty intense on this. So yeah, there's like vignettes, there's like old style film, there's like retro film, like you can do a lot of really cool film effects with a lot of these plugins that exist. Very, very cool stuff. There's a, we get some a pack that's provided by Unity by default, which we'll look at a couple of those. Uh, some of them are optimized for DirectX 11, so uh, meaning that on your desktop hardware, they would perform the best. Some of them are gonna be tricky on mobile because of the performance hit for them. Uh, something like Camera Shake is a simple script, and we'll look at that. Again, I, the idea here is that some of them are, are better for desktop, especially because you have a bigger screen to look at, too, but because they're more processor heavy, yep. so you can do a little bit more and get away with a little bit more. All right, let's look at a couple camera effects here. Let's go over to our guy here. I'm going to hide my minimap camera. And let's look at our game view here. Let's say we want to make this, I don't know, old school, right? Yeah. <laughs> we want to go a little old on this. Let's find our camera here. There's our main camera. Now, under component image effects, notice we have a whole bunch here. Well, where do you find them? If you asset import package effects, this will load them into your project. And we're going to add some of these effects here. So image effects, if we want Bloom. Find that kind of happy medium here. And you can change these values. We'll animate one of these in just a little bit here. I just want to go through kind of a couple effects here. Like that, that's got a cool, nice initial look to it. You, you'll see a lot of bloom effects um, in like fantasy related projects, yeah. like going through forests, things like that. It kind of adds almost like an ethereal. That's look. true, right? As I go here, because you, yeah. you have this like glow. Yeah. Looks almost very uh, magical in a way. Yeah. You know? um, and, and that's a cool thing. Like, you know, you, you want to think about if you're doing a, a game that can support, um, if, you know, if you're using a platform that can support these type of effects, take advantage of them. It's only gonna, it's only gonna enhance your product in the end. You know, you, you want to give people the best experience possible when they're playing your game. So why not use one of these effects to just really kind of enhance the experience? And you can dynamically turn these on and off. Maybe if you're in a magical area of the forest, you can turn them on and you can control them in script. Remember we looked at our git component call? You can enable and disable uh, very easily in code. Yeah, or if you're like in a dream sequence or underwater yeah, even, there's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of uses for these camera effects. Let's look at a couple others, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Because these are pretty cool. Let's take um, 
depth of field. You're a photographer too, aren't you? Me? Yeah. Uh, occasionally, I dabble in, in photography. Oh, wrong one here. <laughs> so changes, so our things up front, think of our f-stop if you're a photographer. Um, we can change our focal distance, so things up close are a little bit more uh, in focus and things farther away. And any of these parameters, you can, um, you can animate. So let's look at, uh, this one will bring us into the next one too, so let's check out this guy here. It'll really make your project look a little more cinematic than just a standard kind of, your standard camera. You know, adding these effects, it just gives it that extra bit of polish that's really gonna make your product go a little bit farther, you know. And there are some mobile ones available too. Um, look on the asset store, but people have gone out of their way to create some plugins that work great for mobile that do this exact same thing. Um, Watch, as I change my focal distance here, doesn't it kind of look like, um, I'm focusing in on this, right? Yep. When I use my camera, my video camera is actually my main camera. My, mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, when I do a video on there, I have to manually focus it in. So yeah. a lot of my videos kind of look like this. So if you wanted that sort of effect, we could animate something like this. Now, yeah. how can we animate something like that? Um, add component. Animator. Let's expand that here. And we need an animator controller for this. So there's a shortcut we can use here, actually. We can go to the animation window. So we can just load up window animation. So there's two components, our animator we looked at before with our Unity animations, and open up our window animation window. To begin animating the game object name main camera, create an animation clip. All right, create it, we'll call it camera blur. Actually, I put this in my scenes folder. I should probably put this in another animation folder, but I can fix that easily. You can drag and drop your stuff inside your Unity interface without a problem. And in here, I want to change uh, my focal distance. So let's start out here. I'm just going to modify this value a little bit, and it writes out my initial value. And it's red to say, hey, we are now recording this value. We're not recording it like across this timeline. You're logging what's called a keyframe. So it's starting out with 53.8. And now, let's say over here, at a half second, I want to be maybe there. Now we'll go between those two values over and over and over again. So let me zoom back a little bit more, maybe go to like a second and a half, and maybe overdo it to this way. So now we have kind of this auto, maybe something's blurry. You're either coming out of a dream, you're waking up, or maybe this is the view through a camera that you specifically want to look like somebody's focusing it. Yeah, maybe it's like a handheld camera shot or something in a, in a game, or it's a security camera or yep. something like that. There's a multitude of, of different uh, things for it. This is all red because it's in record mode. I can get out of record mode, click play, and that's it. It's going to be animating for me. It's like we had a, an online question uh, real quick. Uh, how much do camera effects affect performance? Yes. <laughs> uh, how much do camera effects affect performance? Um, it depends. It depends what you're doing. It depends which effect you're using. It depends what your graphics hardware can support. It depends if any of that can be offloaded on your graphics hardware or if it's all CPU based. So uh, the answer there is it depends. Um, yeah. It can affect it a lot if you're doing a lot of effects, a lot of intensive effects, but it really depends. You'll find that some of the newer Unity effects have optimized versions available. If you look at the docs on Unity site, they'll say this is our new DX11 optimized version. Yeah. So it just it all depends on which one you're using in your hardware as well. I would say as, as a rule of thumb, most of these camera effects work better on console and PC, just yeah. something that has a lot of horsepower that can handle these effects. There are some, like uh, I mentioned before, there are some effects out there that work for mobile. A lot of that is kind of faked in a way. Um, they're, they're doing some very uh, interesting things with uh, uh, post-processing to make that happen. So there are some available. Um, I would say most of them are, are more for your higher end devices. Yeah. Because um, you are going to take a hit. I mean, it does add a lot of draw calls and, and different things to it. Um, but like you said, uh, some are optimized for uh, DirectX 11 and uh, you know uh, certain graphics cards. So yeah, absolutely test it play out. around them, test it out. <laughs> test it out. It There's only way to tell. Yeah, if if you're getting major major draw calls off of uh, you know a certain effect, then obviously maybe that one's not working. Try to find something comparable, that kind of thing. Um, it is a little bit of trial and error in it, but you know that's that's kind of the I, I would say the the. The polish end of your product, you know, yeah. once you start getting your game working, it's 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 running great. 
then get in and start doing these things and seeing uh, how can we push this a little bit, you know, how can we really enhance the effect and that kind of stuff. And we'll look at, um, we'll look at a quick example of the profiler at the end too, so you can kind of get an idea on how things are yeah, that, affecting. That's really, the profiler is awesome, it's really going to show exactly how much, you know, performance hit you're getting from these type of effects. Let's add one more onto here, let's do a component image effects. And let's just see what kind of looks good here. Is there a tilt shift in there? There is a tilt shift. Um, tilt shift is under, there we go. So tilt shift is the effect that, uh, it's neat. If you take a picture of people on a beach and you ever see the images where they make them look like little toys, yeah. it's the tilt shift effect. So let's add tilt shift, let's clear off um, depth, of depth of field. Okay, now let's change some of our tilt shift values here. So blur area, you can define what areas are in focus and are not in focus, which really gives you that toy look inside of uh, certain images. It, it might be kind of hard to tell with the scene that we're set up with here, uh, but that is a pretty cool effect to get that. Um, I know what else I want to show you guys. One more effect. This is very common in games. So uh, this will be, this is actually with the code. So during the break, as I mentioned, I uh, post the code out there. So it's uh, Adam Tulip on GitHub forward slash vamp kid 3D. We are going to be making changes here. The code is by no means perfect yet. So, uh, you know, we are developers as well. So we go through, we iterate, we fix. Yep. If you find anything on there, let us know. Um, I'm definitely aware of probably at least 12 bugs that are in there right now. Or version 0.0.2 right now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you'll find some code in there. Now, I do want to give credit, and I think I actually note in the actual source code files where I found this on the net. There's a pretty cool uh, camera shake group of scripts here. I think they only work if your camera is located at 000. zero, zero. Uh, so maybe I'll have to make some modifications to this code to work in different scenarios. But underneath the scripts folder, there's some different camera shakes and different camera shake modes. So Perlin shake, periodic shake, um, random shake. And so all I've done is I've added over here the, the Perlin shake to my main camera. And we can trigger this off in script or we can set this little checkbox true. So if we look at the code here, Let that load up. And camera shakes are great for things like, you know, if uh, a T-Rex oh, so was stopping yeah. by, yeah, a bomb just went off. Uh, I mean, player gets killed. Player gets killed. There's a, there's a variety of uses for using camera shakes, and camera shakes add a ton of drama to your game, yeah. too. Uh, you know, disorienting the user at the perfect time always, you know, drives the point home a little bit better than just having just some image appear on the screen. And be careful, too. If you, if you find these scripts, you're like, ah, I'm going to use this and place this in this project. Um, caution, because like in this project right now, we have a third-party character, which is running around, third-party character controller, and then we have a freestanding camera rig, which is always following it and rotating around looking at it. So and if we suddenly try to shake the camera, well, this is going to try to, um, this is trying to auto-correct its position based on the user, and we have something else shaking the camera, so it might not work as expected. In, in that case, I would actually use two cameras, disable one, shake the other one, and go back to the other. So there's different ways of doing this. But here, uh, in the code, there is the location I got it up top. And if we go ahead and click on the test button, this just shakes on the spot. So let's see what this actually does here. It uses a coroutine. We talked about earlier. Let's play. And let's crank up, the, we'll try the small one first. This is gonna be very very tiny here. So you can see my, my focusing is still happening there. This is too small, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this matting to, to 0.1. Still pretty minimal. Let's do like point. Let's do one. There we go. Did you see it? Yeah. We'll do magnitude five. Now you saw it. The speed, I think, you know, if you hit something, the speed should probably be a little faster. There you go. Absolutely. You can almost hear the sound effect in your mind, like, <clears throat> right? So real easy to add. Trigger it off once, it shakes your camera, and you're back to normal again. Which is actually kind of good that we're, we're <laughs> this fits the, the, uh, the focus right now. We're, it's all shaky, we're going in and out. Yeah, totally. All right, so some cool effects you can do there. Hopefully you picked up something neat from that. Next, let's talk about animating the camera. We kind of went over this process just a little bit. Cameras are game objects. You can animate any game object. It's very easy. Uh, if you're gonna use multiple cameras, make sure you disable one camera and activate the other one. Uh, Unity's working, they've announced on the roadmap this feature called Director, which is going to allow uh, this timeline where you can really, um, Say, hey, take this camera and pan it over here. Meanwhile, move a character over there and do this. Right now, animations are limited to a game object or its children. 
the director is going to be, they showed it uh, last year at Unite, hopefully all these things overlapping. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's seen the, the Blacksmith demo that Unity put out there. Very, very cool. It's almost like you're, you're kind of